baseball team last night over Florida. Shutout always helps. A lot of strikeouts, uh, domination, early lead, put up a big number early and, and, and carry the day, play good defense, all that stuff. We'll get to it. We'll talk about the wrap-up of spring and all that. I thought of you over the weekend on, on Sunday in particular. I don't know if you were where you could uh, hear the audio from, because a lot of times you'll watch that Sunday round at the CP uh, for the Masters, as is your tradition, the Lang tradition. Uh, I But if you could hear it, um, then you heard the panic that has entered Vern Ludquist's life. He is panicked at all times about any missed putt. It is remarkable to watch what happens to old people. The world is scary to old people, scarier by the minute, the older you get. And like a squirrel is frightening if you're old and it runs past you. Uh, loud noises frighten you be in ways they never used to when you're old. Um, you're cold all the time when you're old. So it's a colder place. The universe is than it was before. Uh, you know, death is lurking from afar. So any little thing to remind you of, of um, you know, the world can be scary. It's, it's omnipresent. And I crack up laughing. If you send a putt five feet past Vern Ludkus, oh my, oh no, there's a chance he could four putt. I mean, he said the dumbest ass things during the Masters I have ever heard anybody say at a broadcast. It was amazing. Any putt that went past the hole, oh, what has he done? It, it was remarkable. Uh, I didn't hear it. Oh, you uh, got to go back. It was I awesome. will. I'll have to. Yeah, it's yeah, awesome. It was, it was, <laughs> uh, Sunday was a bit of a big time at the CP for the yeah, final round. So we enjoyed it. Well, yeah. you know, with Scotty in the lead. And, and I get that it got tight there. And Cam Smith came out firing. But then about halfway through, you're thinking, all right, well. Uh, so what's going on with the kids? You know, you're yeah, asking people around, right, right, stuff right. like that. I just uh, but, want you to know you would have loved it in particular because we've listened to the demise and to hear him be frightened by any putt that went past. What's funny to me, though, is as you get older in general, that's how you feel on the course itself. Oh, right. You're more apt yeah. to leave a putt short at, at 50 <laughs> than you were at 20. At 20, yeah. I'll make that five-footer. I'm coming back. Damn, what, what the hell Who cares? I at, got it. At 50, you're like, oh, I don't know. What could happen if it went by the hole? Nothing good. Yeah. No, it's funny. It's funny. Uh, that's not what I wanted to lead with, but I just thought I'd let you know because it made me laugh, and I thought it was great. Uh, it was it was funny. Okay, so there it is. Let's uh, get to Florida State got a much-needed win last night on the diamond against hated rival Florida, 5 to nothing. a couple of dongs early on to set the stage, dominant pitching. Really, everybody that hit the hill last night looked good, and let's hope it's the start of something Mike Martin Jr. said, in essence, during this quote-unquote rough patch, and to say it's a rough patch is to put it mildly, uh, you know, basically said we simplified and talked about going out and competing. Okay, well, listen, one game does not completely shift the evidence, the data points that we have up to this point, but it could be the start of something. Let's see. But it never hurts to thoroughly vanquish your rivals, and that's what happened last night. And I do think it puts an end temporarily to uh, the noises, which were growing ever louder by the hour. Understandably, concern growing, all of it. Nice win. Nice win. Uh, let's see. Let's see what happens with Louisville beginning on Thursday. That series begins Thursday. Obviously, it's Easter Sunday coming up. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday series here at Dick Hauser. Get that series. Maybe I'll start to think. They're turning the corner. Don't know. We'll find out. At age 61, I don't get startled. I just say WTF with greater frequency. <laughs> That's from Life Spectator. Um, I know. I know. It's 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 funny. Uh, back to football. All kinds of thoughts about Mr. Mims perhaps joining the program. Let's hope. Knock on wood. Did a lot of scouting. A lot of phone calls. A lot of things across the board regarding uh, our chances of getting him. And all were very, very positive yesterday. Uh, the people you talk to, whether it's the fine folks at Rising Spear, efforting to uh, to bring him in and uh, at the very least put a competitive offer on the table. It is so much, right? We We, we saw this a while back and we talked about what was coming. What's coming down the track is a resemblance to professional sports. No more 
heads in sand, all that stuff. At some point, we're going to acknowledge what it is, at least within the power five. But when you now find yourself in the mix and involved in it and no longer perhaps behind the eight ball, no longer ignoring the new reality, but rather actively engaged with a group that is efforting to bring in talented players so that Florida State can more quickly be where we need them to be, uh, both emotionally, <laughs> financially, for the athletic department's sake, you name it. Uh, it's, it is still weird because all of a sudden the talking points begin not with, is it a fit? Does this coach and that coach, do they get along with him? Have they been efforting all this time? Is the, Where's his family from? Where did he grow up? Yeah, these are all factors, but they're not the factor. The factor is the money. It's always going to be now and forevermore that we've turned the corner, the money. And do we have something in place to where we can compete with other people's money that they're offering? Is it the money? And how much of it? And do we have it? And are we prioritizing this particular player the way that some others are? Because if the answer is yes, then it becomes, you know, obviously a competition about uh, what kind of NIL deals and, and the like. Um, the good news is, at least on that front, Florida State is in a good position. I am told Florida State's in a good position to make a substantial offer along the lines of any other that he might get outside of the SEC. And Ohio State doesn't need tackles right now. So, okay, let's go. Let's go. Yeah, I saw Michael's reporting on Warchant.com that, you know, obviously Florida State would be one of the first to secure a visit from Mims as this process plays out over the coming, I don't know, 10 days, two weeks, whatever it will be. Uh, more visits may be lined up, but FSU, as they typically are, the quickest to jump on an opportunity. So they also have a prior relationship. Alex I was Atkins just about to say, well. very big uh, That is a huge here. deal. Yeah. He trusts Alex Atkins. Now, he also, I would think, trusts that a check's not going to bounce if we have to cut a check. It's not. But as long as you can secure the visit and say to him something akin to, hey, on the off chance you get a more robust offer that makes you pause, just make sure to give us a call because you like it here anyway. You love working with Alex. You're going to love working with him day to day. You loved it in the camps. Now let's make sure that, you know, if you have any dot eyes that need dotted or T's crossed, just give us a call. Make us the last phone call, please. I was told, in essence, that that young man would have come to Florida State had we been in a better position, period, the first go-around when he selected Georgia. Secondly, that's how much he likes Coach Atkins. Secondly, uh, you know, we, we, we weren't – well, I'll just end it there. He likes Florida State. He likes Coach Atkins. That is not something we have to prove to him. That's not something Correct. that we have to get around. He does. So, hey, look, man um, – we're our NIL game has been upped. Rising Spear is doing everything they can uh, to put us in a competitive position. Obviously, that wasn't uh, by chance the week of the spring game that they went on a media blitz, attracting attention, donations, new members, and the like. They understand the new reality, and there's no need to sugarcoat any of this. We need money to compete with other schools who are buying for that young man's services and moving forward other young men of that caliber. So that's where we're at. That's the deal. And we're never now, again, we're not going to be in a place that certain universities are in where it is limitless cash. It is, um, you know, Texas A&M will never be outbid if they don't want to be oil money will always be in place to where if they don't want to be outbid, they will not be outbid, but you then are committing to Texas A&M. So good luck with that. Well, and they're committing to you with an absurd amount of money at that point, if it just gets into a straight bidding war. But it seems to me very simple, the situation here with FSU. If you have a competitive offer and you've got the relationships, what are we waiting for here? That's the thing. You Make sure you vet, I suppose, that there wouldn't be a culture issue of him coming here. That I, You always worry when somebody enters the transfer portal that there's a reason beyond playing time. So vet that, make sure that that's square, and if it satisfies the coaching staff, then beyond that point, if it's about relationships and NIL, well, we've got one down, and it sounds like we're empowered to have both down. What are we doing here? Let's close that deal. Yeah, 
for the long time listeners of the Jeff Cameron show, I have never pretended to be a recruiting insider. I have relied on others for that. There are those that that is their chosen specialty. It's what they do. They go to the camps, they visit, they watch these players. They talk to their high school coaches. War chant became uh, the monolith became the number one brand in that arena a long time ago. And so all those years ago, uh, as the Jeff Cameron show grew and became by far and away the most popular Florida State football resource in all the land, then I knew that in order to better inform myself and educate listeners, I better bring in a gene.com, uh, right? I better bring in a Gene Williams. I better bring him in and let him talk. And then later on, Michael and others, of course, in that realm, because that's not my specialty. Why do I say that? Well, it's a preface because I, you know, I understand that and I'm glad that other people do it. I don't want to do it. I hate it, but I know how important it is. And I know there are others who are really good at it, including our own Michael Langston. So the point would be this, you to have that resource to put in those calls as a host here, I asked a lot of people, how realistic do you think it is that Florida State gets this young man? And I was really, really pleased with the answers I got yesterday. I mean, a lot of people who do that very thing, who understand the recruiting world, know where his background is, his relationship with Atkins, what the recruiting process was like for him the first time around, the schools he was considering, all of that, they all seem to think that barring an outrageous offer from somebody else that goes above and beyond what anybody would think to be reasonable, Florida State's got a very good chance of winning the services of this player. That's huge. That's huge. This is also a situation where if we, we used to play this game, if you have 10 potato chips in the offseason, right? This is before NIL was uh, was really allowed. If you have 10 potato chips, how many potato chips are you spending on, on this X player, guy, right? Yeah. Be it a pass rusher or an offensive lineman. Well, here's the situation come to life. Yeah, it's happening. Even if, let's just say that Rising Spear had eight potato chips. Well, don't wait to get potato chips 14 and 15. You spend six of those potato chips right now if you need to. This is the player in terms of the mold and the, and where it fits on the depth chart, where it fits for this program. The, it's a position of need. This is a guy that you've got to have to push you to the next level. If he checks all the boxes and you believe that he's going to be an asset for the culture, there's no cancer in the locker room coming with him, all that kind of stuff, you couldn't have a position of need and a solution match together more neatly than in this situation right here. So spend those potato chips and make it happen. So it's basically the thought is that it comes down to us in the University of Miami. I mean, the bottom line is most people believe those are the two major players in his decision. Now, somebody could come out of left field and decide that they want to enter the ball game, and you're certainly going to listen. Every kid should. Not unlike job offers in the working world, you should always listen to opportunity. Doesn't mean you're going to leave. Doesn't mean that you know, you want to leave. It does mean that you have opportunities and you should always hear what they are. So he's going to he's gonna listen and he's going to take his visits and he's going to do what he's going to do. I do think this gets wrapped up quickly. I do think we're going to know one way or the other this time next week for sure. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, All right. I think this gets wrapped up quickly. I think he makes a decision rather hastily. And I don't mean that as in like he's rushing the process. I think he's going to know what's out there. He's not the kind of player that people are lukewarm about, man. This is just that crazy time, though, where, you know, we, we talked about how it's amazing what a difference two years can make because he can have a camp, basically, that calls over to the athletic department. Mike Norvell, please. I'm sure he's got a cell phone, but you get the point. And then down to Miami and say, I need your best and final offer by tonight <laughs> at 8 p.m. Yeah. Submit what you got. I mean, what a world. And he well, will command it. This is a well, player who will command that. So what's fascinating, and we, you heard it in the interview that I did uh, with Mr. Barton, Mr. Quigley, you know, if you think back on this, you know that uh, the folks at Rising Spear are realists. And again, I don't work for them. I'm not being paid. So no, this they're is blunt not, about that, about the, what it is. Right. So so here's the thing. The, 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 like the founders of this are, in essence, admitting they don't like it. That nobody likes this. This is not ideal. Uh, but it's the Wild West. There are no rules in place. There are in Florida, which really actually hamstring us a bit, which I would ignore all of them. But anyhow, that's just me. Anyhow, uh, that's the stuff that drives you crazy. And, and, but you can't just like say, I don't like this. I don't like what well, you keep getting your head kicked in while you don't like it. 
or accept the reality and get after it and figure right. out how we can do something about it, which is what they're doing. And thank goodness. Yeah, that's one of the things Matthew said last week, which is, you know, the the time of thinking that it's the heartstrings that's going to be the reason that a big time player picks your university is over. So get used to that idea. Yeah, now there will be exceptions. There will be times. Right, but you cannot be caught with your no. proverbial, proverbial pants, down. pants down in that situation. Ain't no way. I mean, a good example, Marvin Jones Jr. did not come to Florida State. Yikes. Marvin yeah. Jones Jr. did not come to Florida State, of all people. Which they take personally at the level I of a rising personally. spear booster level. Absolutely. I take personally. I'm still pissed. Get it together, Marvin. Um, but yes, yes, that's a tough, and that's my favorite player of all time, by the way, senior. And course. to be clear, uh, this the internal sensor. It's not a rising spear booster level. A rising spear slash booster. Very different worlds. They cannot talk whatsoever. Don't want to give that impression. They concluded spring football yesterday. Some thoughts on that. Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. That's next. Hey, no fans. Our partner, ISF Inc., is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF, your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. I'm Paul. I'm Paul. I'm Paul. Actually, all of us that have the privilege to work at Paul's Termite and Pest Control are Paul. We're proud to call ourselves Paul because we work for a company that puts our customers first. We love what we do, and we love the principles our company demands. Give our customers more than they expect and do everything within our power to keep them safe and comfortable. We make a difference every day and know we protect the health of our thousands of North Florida customers that we are honored to call our friends. And we're looking to bring a few more Pauls to our growing family. We have several openings now or in the very near future. Positions include termite, lawn, and general pest tech, route managers, inside sales, and customer service reps. Visit callpauls.com to see what's available and to find out how to apply. Every Pauls receives competitive pay with outstanding benefits, including health insurance, 401k, paid leave time, and holidays. I'm Paul. I'm Paul. I'm Paul. And you could be Paul, too, for the elimination of termites and other pests. And a greener lawn, too. Call Paul's. We've been getting them all in North Florida for over 50 years. Are you hungry and looking for a new way to save some money? Ditch the expensive bites and eats for delivery options. Ordering food from your favorite local restaurant just got easier. Choose foodiestakeout.com to save 10% when you order from select local restaurants today. Text foodies to 230-9456 and get 10% off your first order at foodiestakeout.com. Don't wait. Do it now and save. Text the word foodies to 230-9456. Shop local and save at foodiestakeout.com. Hey, this is your chiropractor, Dr. Ryan Finn with Finn Chiropractic, encouraging you to spring into health. People are outside, working and playing, enjoying Tallahassee's beauty, but new injuries and sinus problems are blooming everywhere. While we at Finn Chiropractic have helped thousands with spring-related issues, the only way to know if we can help you or your loved one is to come in for the Phenomenal Health Evaluation. Go to FinnChiro.com to take advantage of our new patient special offer. That's F-E-N-N, FinnChiro.com. And remember, your chiropractor loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Enterprises, roofing and construction services. T-Spark, T-Spark Construction Com. We conquer all peaks. We fix those dark leaks. Call 850-766-1340. T-Spark Enterprises, roofing and construction services. T-Spark, T-Spark Construction Com. License number CCC 1331204. Clean, renewable energy means fresher air, healthier residents, new green jobs, and a stronger, more resilient community. How we get there is up to you. Share your input today to help shape the Tallahassee of tomorrow. Take the clean energy survey at talgov.com. Here we go. Your next chance to grow your green this spring and win $1,000 is coming up at 2 p.m. I just won $1,000. Listen for the keyword at the top of the hour. Then enter that keyword online at realtalk93.com. 
We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jam and Show brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness, two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. The summer months, first class is always free. If you're a uh, a new member, somebody joining for the first time, that first month is free, in fact, with the purchase of a heart rate monitor. I always encourage active members like myself to, uh, you know, maybe upgrade. If you do, you'll get a huge discount. But, uh, hey, look, beyond the incentivizing to get in shape, you know that you need to be held accountable. You know that you want something that works, and it's science fact. and that's my friends at Orange Theory Fitness doing great work. First class is always free, so go find out for yourself. You don't have to just trust me. Go in there and find out what it's all about. I think you'll walk out saying, okay, that's a good workout, and I can be held accountable by people who care and are knowledgeable, and uh, yeah. Interval training is uh, what is done all around the world. World-class athletes, you name it, they utilize it there at Orange Theory Fitness. Go check them out, orangetheoryfitness.com. Two locations, by the way, Midtown and on the north side of town. So Orange Theory Fitness. I mentioned the wrap-up of spring football, which I thought to be a mixed bag. Now, a lot of positives. It's hard on a day-to-day basis while mentioning the good and the bad than to not present this in such a way that you come off, you walk away from the show feeling a certain kind of way, you know, like, Oh, if, if he was, if, if he was overly critical on a Tuesday of the practice uh, from last week or a player lack of development, whatever it might be, then that kind of resonates with you. You hear that and you think, man, I, I don't know. They're, it don't sound like they're real positive about what they're seeing. If you're overly positive about a great practice, a great session, a great segment, um, you know, a, a day in which a segment uh, group has has their way, then you might you might walk out of there. You might have that resonate with you in such a way that you think, oh man, they're they're making massive strides. They're going to be so much better. The truth is, it's usually somewhere in between. It's that it varies from day to day. These workouts, these efforts, these practices, these performances. Um, it is uh, like most things in life, uh, kind of uh, the good, the bad, and everything in between. If you're trying to label sort of what spring was, I think they've got some answers in areas that I did not anticipate, which is very encouraging. And I think they've got some work to do in areas that I thought would be appreciably better than they were. So that's not unlike most places that aren't one of four or five schools. When you have numbers in elite level talent to throw out a problem, the chances you remedy the problem are greater. But Florida State's not Alabama or Ohio State or Georgia currently. That's not what we are. So it stands to reason that you're going to have some holes to fill and some areas that are going to have to be improved if you want to get to where you're going. But if you're asking, was the spring a success? I think the answer to that, for starters, is yes. Partly because there were no major injuries during spring, no career ending injuries on the field. Now you have an off the field problem that nobody can predict. It's a tragedy in the sense that um, a life was affected greatly, meaning multiple lives because of a bad car accident. Nobody died, but a bad car accident. And that bad car accident affected the one plug and play power five receiver who was a proven commodity that you were bringing in to alter 
the projection of your receiving core, which was not good a year ago. That's the negative. But that wasn't the result of spring practice. That's just an off-the-field thing. So what we saw on the field day-to-day, they were able to – they were able to really avoid any catastrophic injury. Everybody kind of turned out okay. Am I forgetting about somebody? No. No, no I think so. All. Okay. All right. So you have that. Um, and I think that what we thought was true turned out to be furthered, the belief furthered. So, for example, uh, I thought that he had successfully, if nothing else, over these first couple of years, changed the locker room, the work ethic, the belief the way they went about their business, the camaraderie, the unity, all of it. That is 100% true. This team believes in this coaching staff and each other and works hard and feeds off of each other. The toxicity that existed in this locker room for the better part of five years has been remedied. It's gone. You don't have it. And if there were any problems that lingered, residual you know, areas of concern, I think those might have been remedied by – Mr. Brownlee's departure. So I don't think that the secondary group, that that segment group that we talked about on the regular as being somewhat problematic from work ethic standpoint, focus standpoint, uh, the day-to-day uh, workouts, I don't think it's a problem anymore. I look at a guy like Akeem Dent who has come a long way, is now a vocal leader and a really good football player. Jamie Robinson is solid as they come. Uh, I think when you look at players, whether it's – uh, Duke, or if you're looking at uh, Kevin Knowles or any of these other guys, man, they got a lot of guys that fit the part, work hard, and have improved as players. Uh, you know, guys that accepted the challenge like Renato Green and others, they've got players to solve for the future. I know that's not a segment we do today from our friends at ISF, but they do. I think they're going to be all right. Does that mean that there aren't going to be holes or things of concern if, you know, in terms of the, the depth of talent in that group? No. But in terms of their personalities, work ethic, focus, all that, I think that's largely been remedied. Yeah, a couple of things that are interesting in the last 24 hours, because practice was there was a lot of special teams work. Mike was oh, went on the boy, record great, talking about yeah, that. Uh, they're in shorts and, and helmets. Mm-hmm. Um, there were a couple of interesting plays, like Johnny Wilson responded to Saturday's performance and was back making some big plays. T-shirt and a helmet, yep. That's fine. Uh, Azaria Thomas made a couple of plays at an interception. Also, uh, you know, showing what he showed, he bookended it with an impressive play where he said, all right, good luck this summer. Go get you even bigger and stronger because you, sir, have the base to be a really good football player. Just like all can. Yep. Yep. Then today, Alex Atkins spoke to the media. There's a wrap up tomorrow. There'll be, uh, both the defensive and special teams coordinators, coach Fuller Papuchas. Uh, but he was asked was coach Atkins by Aslan, um, what about Maury Smith? Does he need to get bigger in the weight room? That was the last question today during the breakout. And I thought, very good question. I wonder what Coach Atkins will say. And he said, well, he's got to get better in a lot of things, you know, both with, you know, technically speaking on the field, but then off the field, he didn't run from it. Coach Atkins said, yes, Maurice has to get in the gym and get bigger and stronger, but he also listed several other players along with him, which I found interesting. So it wasn't just a yes. It was, so does Darius, so does Bless Harris, so does Lloyd Willis. No, that's a nice way of couching it. He's yes, but Darius does. I think Darius certainly needs to. Oh, I think if, if he's going to be a guard, I mean, you know, it's just a little different. I think they all got to transform their bodies and continue to do that. I think they got to get bigger. I think they got to get a lot more athletic. I think that this is a group that it, its ceiling is pretty average. I, I don't think it's an elite group of players. I don't think they have very good players up front. Um, yeah, but you want to see quote unquote body by storms. You want to get to the fall and say, oh, look at that. Okay. Listen, that's not going to, you know, that's not going to win the Remington, but uh, that's better. That's better than it was. Well, they're, they they got an interesting set of questions uh, facing the offensive line. Uh, you know, let's see what happens with, uh, from a health standpoint, uh, the, the, the six or how about the, the, the seven or eight guys that we think that can be a part of this rotation that are going to be counted on to give you, uh, in some cases, starts off the bench for injured players, uh, prolonged periods of time on the field while a guy is nursing an ankle, whatever it might be, because just the very nature of the position, usually we see that shake out that way. And, and, and hey, listen, Mims could go a long way in solving the problems or for the future. Many problems. Okay, yeah, yeah I agree. It's, it's, it's paramount that they get this kid. If, I mean, go get him. Do everything in your power to get him. You may not get him, but don't lose because you didn't do everything you could to get this kid in here 
It's a difference maker. He looks different. It's it's just it goes. Yeah, move Scott to right tackle. I mean, you already you start smiling. You're like, oh, okay. Well, that's the first move. All right, now what do we do at guard? Yeah, you start to feel the riches a little bit. Yeah. So, I, I guess my overriding point was that where there are areas of weakness, there are potential problem solvers, and both in the transfer portal, the off season workouts. There are things that can be done to improve that group from right now as we end spring to the first game against Duquesne. Um, I don't think, barring a change in personnel, which could happen, uh, what if you bring in two offensive linemen? Uh, Barring that, I don't think they're going to go from being average, slightly above average, to like real good. I don't don't think we're ever going to walk out there and go, man, that group is really good. I think we're going to say, all right, but can, but if you get to average, because they already run it. I mean, they're all, yeah, already, they're explosive. Yeah, you're you're gonna have explosive runs. As an FSU fan, <laughs> you can reasonably expect that you're gonna have explosive runs every game. You just need the consistency of if it's third and two, you know what? We, we could can run line the ball. up and get it. We could. Well, it'd be nice, right, to believe that that's possible that you have a crew up front that could do that. And so the defense would believe that, and you'd see them play it differently. Yeah, and, and your conversion rate on third down because yeah. we suck on third down. Well, for obvious reasons, yeah. your quarterback can't third throw down. it when when he's behind the chains, and uh, and teams don't have to respect that, and so they're going to load up. But third down is largely an offensive line down too when it comes down to it, because if it's third and long, you can't leave seven in to protect. Right. They need to be to be able to hold up on their own. So we got some answers there. Um, I'd be curious. I think the only area where I don't believe they will have an answer come fall and that nothing developed in the spring that leads me to believe it's going to be better in any way, shape, or form and that they are largely stuck where they're at and and is tied in. I think we agree on that. I don't know that anybody thinks the tight end room is going to get better uh, because I don't think they'll focus in all likelihood. I don't think they're going to focus a transfer portal kid when you have other needs, when you're looking at offensive, let's say you're only bringing in four more people. Okay. Well, you know, I think you're going to probably look long and hard at an offensive lineman, maybe two, and then maybe one other guy that would probably either be a receiver, a defensive end or a linebacker. Like I don't, I don't. Yeah. yeah it's a know. luxury to go get an H back who can play. Cause Cam will do enough. Yeah. You just got to find a guy who, who can be on the end of the line. And I don't know, maybe you go sixth offensive lineman at that point. Well, I got no problem with Douglas being just an extra blocker. He's a big guy. Yeah, he had a couple of good blocks on Saturday. Yeah, that he's just shown a, growth. We a big dude, you know. But uh, we got we got some projects there, you know. We got some guys that are a ways away. That'd be one of the places where evaluation. You're saying hmm, because you do so well. I mean, like Omar Graham, right? Oh, the one well, linebacker yeah, they well, brought in. Like, I love oh, what okay. he's going to be. Yeah. All right, D line interior. Yep, Aaron Hester on the outside defensive end. Dante Anderson, preferred walk-on, scholarly situation, whatever it is. Nice. I can see why you brought him here. A lot of these guys, I mean, Brian Courtney, I'll give you that but as a receiving. Years, but he's two years away. And he's a receiving tight end. Yeah. That's what he's going to be. Yeah. But some of the other dudes, like, well, okay. Well, you know, I think they thought with Jackson West's disposition and nastiness, and he is that. He had one of the best pancakes at camp. Well, he's just nasty. You know, he's just a nasty dude. A he'll, perimeter pancake on Amari, and it was it was special to see. When he'll punch you in the face. He's not afraid. He's quick to hit guy. He's got a terrible attitude in a good way. Can't catch a lick. Would need a third hand. So, you know, that's where we're at. So that group's not going to be better, I don't think. Now, you could have somebody fall in your lap. I suppose in the transfer portal, if there was an all-world tied in who saw immediate playing time and was disgusted with his current situation and decided, oh, maybe I'll go to Florida State. Oh, okay. Well, then, yeah, you wouldn't look a gift horse in the mouth, but it's unlikely. Yeah, but we just need somebody who's like Gabe Neighbors, you know? Man, I... He, he would have worked so well yes, in this system. but we misutilized him when he was here. Yeah, I know. Man, love me some Gabe Neighbors. He's Always. still in the league for I, a reason. Yeah, he will stay in the league for a while. He does a lot of things well. Anyhow. I, uh, that's an area that's not going to get better. I think the offensive line has a chance to, obviously with personnel shift and getting bigger and stronger. I like where we're at on defense right now. I kind of leave that alone. I think that's going to be a group that plays better. They showed signs in the second half of the season of being better. Anyhow, it carried over to this spring offensively. Again, the evaluation part of this, they're not going to go out and get another quarterback. It's not one that fits the role they need. I would look long and hard because I don't think it doesn't seem likely to me based on what we know that Winston Wright's going to be available for the fall. And if he's not available for the fall, like let's say, let's say in theory, he could come back. Well, what are you doing? I mean, 
give that young man his best opportunity. Don't let him go out there at 60%. That's not fair to him. Just give it time, rehab, get yourself right, get back to where you were when you transferred in here, and then go produce for us. In the interim, I would look at another receiver. I don't think they have what they need at receiver. I don't. I don't think – it didn't look like to me that Malik McLean took a step forward at all this spring. Can you trust that Portier is anything other – then Tate Rodemaker's back shoulder target every, twice a practice. Hey, he and A.J. Duffy had a connection yesterday. Well, maybe down the line. but I, A it, little one-handed back shoulder. It was quite impressive. Great. Do you trust it in a game in the fall? No, not yet. So I don't trust that Johnny Wilson's going to be consistent enough. Uh, I love Micah Pittman. Point is, you could go get another receiver. I'd go take a look at it. By the way, surprise the camp. Running backs. Running backs were the surprise of camp. They're good at running back. Benson's a good player. If that's what he's going to be this fall, you got yourself a 1A and 1B because I do believe Treshawn Ward is a nice player. And you've got third down backs as well, so you got every situation covered. Running back's nice. That's where we're at heading into the offseason. Get after it, guys. Let's see what the transfer portal hails. Let's hope, like hell, we're able to bring Mims in. All kinds of rumors. He's on campus today. I do believe that process will be a quick one from everything I hear. Whether we get them or not, we're going to know relatively soon. That's good. I don't like waiting around. I want to know. Seal my fate, good or bad? Let's go. Let's find out. Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Your local news now. The Gadsden County Sheriff's Office arrested a man in relation to a murder that occurred Monday. GCSO responded to a call Monday that a woman had been injured. The 26-year-old woman was transported to the Gadsden County campus of HCA Florida Hospital. She sustained a puncture wound from Leozin Duraiko, her 39-year-old live-in boyfriend. The woman died from her injuries. Duraiko was arrested and charged with first-degree premeditated murder. Duraiko is being held in the Gadsden County Jail. A new form of art is popping up in downtown Tallahassee, showcasing Leon County's finest artists. With sustainability atop priority, the Chain of Parks Art Festival is teaming up with the city's Think About Personal Pollution program to showcase eight repurposed rain barrels decorated by local artists. This public art project is on display until April 23rd and 24th. Then they will be sold at a silent auction at the Chain of Parks Art Festival with money going to Lemoyne Arts. This is Rachel Lene with your Real Talk 93.3 Local News Update. Brought to you by Macklemore Systems. Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Frobley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Mainly cloudy this afternoon with a high of 81. Winds out of the south, 10 to 15 miles per hour. 63 tonight, mainly cloudy skies. Overcast tomorrow. Chance for scattered thunderstorms. Daytime highs approaching 79. Chance for scattered thunderstorms. Friday and Saturday, 83. Friday, 84. Saturday. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 79. Spring is literally just around the corner here in Tallahassee, and Southeast Portable Buildings has a great way to make your spring enjoyable. Gazebos, pole barns, all sorts of stuff to get your family outside in the spring and enjoying the great weather that is soon coming our way. Call Southeast Portable Buildings today, 580-6400. That's 580-6400, or visit them online at southeastportablebuildings.com. Well, well, well. Hey, Jeff, look at this place. Yeah, My yeah. Goodness. Well, doing well. It's been a while since I've seen you, brother. But, uh, you know, it hasn't been a while since I've been over to Gordo's. I go there on the regular because of you, Eddie. Well, we keep you regular. Well, that's true. But I think of Gordo's as a place to sit down, have a cold beer, talk to your friends, enjoy the sports, eat the delicious food. But I think of you as Uncle Eddie, a man who takes care of his people and takes care of the town. I appreciate that, Jeff. Hey, and we'll keep you regular. Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Here's what you missed on the Greg Tish Show. Chattanooga, Tennessee. Pastor Tabner was alone with a female church employee. Oops. She in a towel and he in his boxers. The charismatic 41-year-old Hurley explained the two of them had been making chili and gotten food on the floor. <laughs> With the hot dogs that they are making, we are hoping that the pastor used the right condiments. I think there was at least one hot dog involved. I don't know what you're talking about. We are just making chili dogs. The Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. The Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com.
Go is where you heard it. Go and save and get it done with ease. Chad and Shannon, legendary team at Hamilton Home Loans. They're Knowles just like you. 844-FSU-LOAN online at fsuhomeloans.com. And we are excited to be partnered with them, and we thank them for partnering with us. Uh, again, Hamilton Home Loans, a mortgage company that is designed around speed, simplicity, service, cutting-edge technology, and the best rates. 844-FSU-LOAN, fsuhomeloans.com. I'm still stuffy. I hate it. I hear it in my ears, and it drives me nuts. Maybe you don't notice it as much, but I apologize for that nasally stuff. It's far better. You're at like 90%. Yeah, I'm getting there, man. I'm getting there. You know what I did yesterday, man? It's crazy. Took my oldest son to uh, open house at uh, Leon High School, where he'll be going to school next year. And This is happening. High school. What are we doing here? It's nuts. A lot of questionable things. That's what we're doing. Well, here. that'll be coming up yeah. for him, perhaps. Yeah. Yes. But, uh, man, I just, I kind of, I was shell shocked. I looked like I had seen battle. I just staring at the gym and, ugh. What is the, um, cause I know you've got a lot of stories about illegality, criminality, and things of that nature. <laughs> I'm just very honest on the show. We're you an are. open book here. Yeah. What is like the dumbest thing that you got in trouble for? That's maybe that I got in trouble for. Yeah. Like in, in high school. Yeah. You got sent to the principal's office or you got a demerit or a detention or whatever. Was there anything just ever trivial that got you in trouble? I tripped somebody in the halls one time and their books went flying all over the place. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I didn't like the kid and I don't regret it. Mm. He was an ass and he was sprinting past me and I just stuck my foot out and he went flying and a teacher saw it mm. when the books went from here to high heaven. Yep. He probably had homework assignments in the pages of the book. So they, they, they flew. It loose. was fan- his trapper keeper went a good long <laughs> way. And, uh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, books went flying, skinned his elbow. Oh man. Um, oh, he was, yeah. Well, he took real joy in that. Oh, I did. And, um, what a bully. It was a little, well, listen, no, this kid, you would have been like, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. There is a difference. Yeah. There is a difference. Yeah. 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 There's picking on the small, which no, is not, not allowed. That's, that's not what we do. That's not what I did here at all. Yeah. No, I didn't. No, I wouldn't. So that, that was dumb. And I really didn't care. I mean, I knew they were going to send me I'm, as soon as I looked up and saw it was actually a math teacher who I didn't like either. Mr. Collins. Uh, and, and he told me to take it to the, um, hope you're doing well, Mr. Collins. He, I think he's dead. He was old as hell when I was in high school. It's been a long time. So I don't think he's dead. He is dead. You know, if not, he's well over a hundred. Um, three of the sky, Mr. Collins. So yeah, he sent me to the office and whatever. I mean, they were like, telling me all the bad, you know, why that, why that was bad. I knew why it was bad. I did it intentionally. I know it was calculated. I know why it was bad. I, I don't, I'm not a sociopath. I did it intentionally. I hockey checked the hell out of my friend into a locker one day. And of course, a teacher was never in the hallways. Right, was there. Right. Mr. Lang. I was like, mm. oh, you have got to be kidding me. It's a good hit. Hey, yeah. You squared him up. I did. Yeah. Shoulder right to the sternum. Oh, yeah. I have, I have a friend uh, to this day. We haven't spoken in a long time, but there's this understanding that if we do, we'll get along like it's you know, yesteryear. Sean Washington, uh, young man who, by the way, broke his neck and is still with us and kicking ass and you know, go runs and everything else. But uh, he, he uh, <laughs> broke his neck on a trampoline. Crazy. Oh, no. Yeah. 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 So at a birthday party. But uh, oh, yeah, he uh, he and I would play this game. I don't know why high school kids do this. I think it's the thing about machismo and toughness. We had a, it was open season on the other. You're allowed to punch each other in the ribs. So yeah, yeah, so like yeah. if you're walking and I could sneak up and pat and, and then it was legal. But you always were on kind of guard. You kept your elbows tucked. And, uh, yeah, we got in trouble for that. Like, we were punching each other hard in the ribs whenever we got an open shot. I remember feeling bad one time. I squared him up. And, like, he buckled to the ground. And I thought, he's hurt. That ain't cool. I like him. That shouldn't happen. I'll keep it very brief. But a story I've told before is just one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen. This uh, one class, there was a project where you couldn't be late. Even if the printer wasn't working, like, the teacher could not have been more clear. Hmm. And what happens? Day of, get in line to turn in your stuff. Has a note from his mom, says printer didn't work. She says, that's not going to cut it. Yeah. I, I told you, print yeah. it two days before. Yeah. <laughs> and so he starts to flip out, and he spikes his pen on her desk. The pen cap oh, flies whoa, off, whoa. And, the, and the regular pen ricochets and hits her in the face. Oh! 
Oh, yeah. What are we doing here? Dead silence because this is a strict teacher. Everybody's ready to like crack up because also, it didn't hurt her. But also, if you're having a nervous breakdown, there's some problems at the home. What are we yeah. doing here? Yeah, he's a good kid too. I liked him. Mm. But um, that is one of the most epic moments of getting sent to a principal's office I've ever seen because it was just a big pen right to the cheek. So I'm the last of the generation that actually took boards to the ass if you got sent to the office in middle school. What? I got hit. Yeah, Mr. Rose, our principal before uh, Mr. Cinnamon. Uh, Mr. Cinnamon? <laughs> yeah, Mr. Cinnamon became the you principal later on. you kidding me. No, great guy. His son, Greg, and I played football together uh, and are still friends. But uh, yeah, 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 no, Mr. Rose hit me with a paddle. Do you know Bert Sugar back in the day? No, I wish. He would have been a great guy to know. Uh, no, uh, I got paddled. What? Oh, I mean, hit hard. In public school? Yes. Bay Point Middle School. Like the Catholics will beat the hell out of you, no, but a public I, school. A whooping in sixth grade. Wow. And there was nothing like that. You know that. why? Oh, no, of course not. I was gambling. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known that. I retract my former statement. It's the Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio or Chan TV. Whether you're looking to get back into an old sport or just want to spend more time outdoors to explore all life has to offer in our beautiful city, the dedicated team at Tallahassee Orthopedic Clinic is here for you every step of the way. Now scheduling an appointment has never been easier. Just visit teamtoc.com and click schedule online. You were always more than my mom. You were my role model, my best friend and biggest supporter. You filled my days with unconditional love. And you also prepared for the day when you couldn't be here. Because of the woman you were back then, I'm able to be the woman I am now. Your planning made this moment possible. Set your family up for life. Southern Farm Bureau Life Insurance. Your friends for life. This is Andy Cohen. When I was a law enforcement officer, I devoted my life to a career of service and protection. Who's protecting you? Give me a call. 850-671-FARM. That's 671-FARM. Helping you is what we do best. Southern Farm Bureau Life Insurance Company, Jackson, Mississippi. Not licensed to do business in all 50 states. People trust Sellers for better tile, carpet, and hardwood flooring. Sellers Flooring Advisor Ryan Fitzgerald. We understand most people don't come in with great knowledge of what they're looking for or what they need. So at Sellers, what we try to do is use our expertise to guide you through the process. Get Sellers working for you. We make it easy, and we have the experts on staff to get you where you need to be, and we give you the option. On Capital Circle Northeast, just north of Mayhan Drive, call 656-8453. Online at Sellers tile.com there's fun to be had every night at the corner pocket take home prizes on trivia tuesdays and beer bingo thursdays and kickstart your weekend with martini fridays plus happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the knolls take the field watch all the best games at the corner pockets vegas wall featuring 560 inches of flat screen tv heaven oh really the best food the best drinks and the best place to watch all the games tallahassee loves the corner pocket T-Spark Enterprises, roofing and construction services. T-Spark, T-SparkConstruction.com. We conquer all peaks. We fix those darn leaks. Call 850-766-1340. T-Spark Enterprises, roofing and construction services. T-Spark the Cameron Show is sponsored by the legendary team at Hamilton Home Loans. Great rates, cutting-edge technology, and transparent communication is the recipe for a five-star mortgage experience at FSUHomeLoans.com. thing and it wasn't ceremonial either if you caught 
principal of Cuesta Elementary circa 1969, Mr. Pardo, on a bad day, the wood on ass impact sounded like cannon fire. <laughs> yeah, it was, man. It was. Yeah, even, you know, obviously Mario is very old, but referencing the 60s for middle school, obvious, I was in the 80s, but uh, I, I would tell you that um, Pedal, you'd hear that off in the distance. He's not wrong about that. That makes me laugh because in my bizarre mind, and I can't explain how it works, I just think of uh, the principal being there and then him asking Gene Deckerhoff, you know, should we, is this paddle time? And then Gene just yelled, <laughs> Fire them cannons! You know how I know Gene Deckerhoff? Gene, if you're listening, you know we love you. You know how I could tell he was ready to retire? He didn't shed a tear. Didn't care at all. He couldn't wait to ride the hell out. My man was like, man, that'll do it for the spring game. Okay. He was ready to go. He was out the door. Uh, I'm surprised he didn't, you know, he's too classy and a great man, but so long, bitches. I mean, he was ready to go. But did I play for you when I got sent from the university? Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. Right People were you. talking about it in the chat the other day, oh, too. Oh, it's so good. Uh, one last thing before I go. Yeah. Pay up and go Knowles. Yeah. I was laughing. Um, <laughs> got that message. Okay. Um, and my career, your account is 30 days <laughs> past due. Yeah, let's go. go Knowles. Yeah. Oh, that was great. But he was ready to go and there was no tears. None of that. No, I'm going to keep it here as long as possible because I want to stretch the moment. Nope. He was done dealing, ready to walk. Your account is 90 days past due. <laughs> We're in a fourth and long here. <laughs> Man, you can still hear it in the chest. Yeah. Get you some of that driving around Tallahassee. Oh, they are. Their windows are down. They're already breathing it in. Man. It doesn't stop. Can't wait till this libations Friday. The Jeff Cameron show war chant invitational man. The second harvest going to make out like bandits. We've raised a lot of money thanks to the kind-hearted folks of this community and our sponsors, many of whom we will mention in the second hour. But, man, this is going to be so much fun, and the day is almost here, and I'm starting to feel better, and I'm excited about it. It's just one of the best things that we're able to do. Just We're given a platform. We're able to do it. And so that's cool, and we're able to do it because we have great sponsors and wonderful listeners who pony up whenever we ask them to for great causes. And the greens will be rolling on Friday. Mm, you were there you. yesterday at Capital City Country Club with a little walkie through. A little walkie walk. Uh -huh. Yep, that's right. It's just like what Mike Norvell does. You know, where, where am I going to stand? Where are we going to stand for instruction? 30 seconds. Where should you be? <laughs> I'll bet he quizzes the assistants about where they should be at well, certain you times. You want that kind of buttoned up tomorrow when we get out there. This is how it's going to look. This way, this way, this way. I just want one of those assistants to be empowered to say, maybe we shouldn't lead with special teams at the spring game. Maybe then we shouldn't, you know, go with uh, two-point conversions followed by special teams. Don't think that's going to bring the crowd to their feet, Mike. Why don't we save that for halftime? Why don't we start with a game situation and then, you know, sprinkle in your little two-point conversion stuff and kick off and punt. And then second half, we'll get it on with our celebrity coaches. That one hurt because they just got it right on Thursday. Move that. Well, well whatever. It's not my job. Do that at halftime. Perhaps don't practice kickoffs and stuff like that uh, at the spring game. Hour number two, forthcoming. Stay with time for a chance to grow your green and win a thousand dollars cash plus a shot at a ten thousand dollar grand prize here's your new keyword grind g-r-i-n-d grind g-r-i-n-d grind enter that word now at realtalk93.com and you might be the next winner oh my god thank you oh my god i just won a thousand dollars hey this is monica hey this is elizabeth and i just won one thousand dollars all right more of the jeff cameron show is coming up next after this town hall news break on wvft gretna tallahassee Breaking news this hour at townhall.com. I'm Bob Agnew in Washington. Western weapons are still streaming into Ukraine as White House commits more military assistance. Western weaponry pouring into Ukraine helped blunt Russia's initial offense and seems certain to play a central role in the approaching, potentially decisive battle for Ukraine's contested Donbass region. Yet the Russian military is making little headway, halting what has become a historic arms express. 
The U.S. numbers alone are mounting. The Biden administration is preparing yet another more diverse package of military support, possibly totaling $750 million to be announced in the coming days. The additional aid is a sign that the administration intends to continue expanding its support for Ukraine's war effort. Bernie Bennett, Washington. New York Mayor Eric Adams says a man sought in connection with an attack on a subway train in Brooklyn that left 10 people shot is now considered a suspect. We still uh, are zeroing in on the person of interest and uh, we are sure we're going to apprehend him. Mayor Adams spoke to NBC's Today Show. Nearly two dozen people were injured when tornadoes swept through central Texas as part of a broader storm system expected uh, to spawn still more dangerous weather. Officials say a wind-driven wildfire swept through neighborhoods in a mountain community in drought-stricken southern New Mexico, burning at least 150 homes and other structures along the way as well. Once described by the Fed as transitory, it now looks increasingly likely that inflation will be sticking around. The Labor Department's producer price index, a measure of inflation before it reaches consumers, skyrocketed a record 11.2 percent last month from a year earlier. The March index was up 1.4 percent from the month before. Energy prices, which were on the rise even before Russia's February 24th invasion of Ukraine, soared 36.7 percent from March of 2021. Rich Thomason reporting. More on these stories at townhall.com. I'm about to compare a pepper shaker to a cash out refinance. Hang with me. You know when you're at a restaurant and they ask, would you like some fresh ground pepper? And then they crank that giant tube, but almost nothing comes out. For me, only a certain amount of time is socially acceptable to wait. I know that getting that pepper out might make my life better, but it just seems too impossible. And that's what we hear people say about the cash out refinance. People realize that the value of their home has gone up like hot pepper the last few years, leaving all this extra money sitting inside their home. But is it too hard to get out? It's Ryan from United Faith Mortgage. If you're interested in cashing out the extra pepper in your home, we're good at doing all the work while you just sit back and relax. And often, your mortgage payment and years in the loan will stay the same. If you'd like to hear about your options, we are United, United Faith Mortgage. mortgage. United Faith Mortgage is a DBA of United Mortgage Corp. 25 Metal Park Road, Melbourne, New York. Licensed mortgage banker. For all licensing information, go to Animal Consumer Access. Total or corporate Animal Consumer 1330. Equal housing lender. I license in Alaska, Hawaii, Georgia, North Dakota, South Dakota, or Utah. Very low school. He's keeping you comfortable. This is Kyle, service manager from Barano Heating and Air. Schedule an appointment from your mobile device to learn about our total comfort service program with guaranteed same-day service, 15% off necessary repairs, and $25 berry books to use towards air filters and other products. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Barano Heating and Air any day, anytime, anywhere. Online at baranoac.com. Water license, CAC 1816-186. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Broadcasting live from Florida's capital city, this is the Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness on Real Talk 93.3. Now, stop what you're doing and listen closely. It's time for the Jeff Cameron Show in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. you're doing those things make sure you're also liking and subscribing appreciate you what a great time of year man i'm very excited i know we don't talk about it a lot on this show uh for a variety of reasons but i'm really excited about the nba playoffs because i think it's wide open uh obviously we're moving ever closer to the nhl playoffs tom i'm really excited about that of course we've got major league baseball 
well underway. I'm nightly laying in bed watching a little baseball as I drift off to sleep, and I love that in the background, even if it's not my team, just hearing the sounds of baseball, baby. I was thankful to be able to avoid Matthew yesterday after blowing yeah. a 4 to nothing lead in the eighth inning. Well, that'll hurt your feelings, yeah. a little 5-4 to four action. Bounced back with a 2 nothing win last night, but um, one could argue with two eighth-inning leads blown, Mets could be uh, you know, undefeated at this time, could but be, that's could okay. Be, could be. Bullpen that's, does matter. It does matter. It makes a difference in games. <laughs> yes, it does. I don't know if anybody knows that. Yep. Little-known fact about baseball. Pirates 6, Cubs 2 currently in the fifth inning. Get you some Chicago. Suck it. Uh, let's see if the Pirates can hold on to a four-run lead here as we go through. Give up two home runs to the same guy yesterday, and that was it, and we lost 2-1. to one. Wasted a great performance. Great performance. The fighting key Brian's are here. So, yeah, yeah. And he played well yesterday and didn't have a hurt wrist for once in his life. It was nice to see. That was, uh, that, that's good to go. Good to go. But anyhow, baseball back in full force to go with the NBA playoffs. My son last night staying up way too late, late watching his Clippers lose. Woke up. First thing he told me was how devastated he was. They blew a four point lead late. Very upset. They were leading the whole way, as I recall. Yes. At one point by 10. Coughed it up. I told him the bitter disappointment, son. Well, they're still they still have a chance, right? Yeah, they, they do. They, they do. They play the nine ten yeah. winner. Yeah, yeah, like good luck, son. You weren't going anywhere anyhow. Especially since Kawhi Leonard's never going to play basketball again. Apparently, I ne- listen, man. I I I can't fathom that. That just drives me nuts. How long are you going to be hurt? In perpetuity? It's just amazing what a different turn everything took when Zaza Pachulia mm. extends underneath his feet between Golden State and San Antonio. Because in a way, it's a reason for Toronto to be eternally grateful because he would never have gone there. Correct. But he probably doesn't turn into a load management type guy without that moment. Well, load management, my ass. That's I'm taking seasons off. Like, on the, we're just going to take seasons off. Take a load off. Yeah. You're taking a load off. I'm just going to steal money over here. Just not going to ever work again, apparently. That's, uh-huh. like, <laughs> that's like Simmons. Uh, my man. Bad back for two years? Come on, man. I, there's no chance. It would drive me nuts. I would have a hard time. I'm talking about as a teammate. I'm not talking about, you know, nothing you can do about it as a fan, your management, whatever. You got to figure some things out. As a teammate, trying to win championships and the, and the like, you know, actual competing. I don't like to tell somebody about their pain tolerance, but. Some, you, you would. Oh, at some point. At some point, when I see you stand up on the bench to cheer us hitting a big shot, you're not hurt, man. You're not hurt. Come on. You jumped up mighty quick there to celebrate that basket in your suit that you've been in for two years. Sounds like he's trying to get an insurance claim. It's nuts. It, it's just, I would not. I, I'd i have a hard time. I would really struggle with that. That's not even trying to be tough. That's just like, you when you work out on a day, well, year round these days, these guys stay in shape year round, of course. And you've committed yourself to something. I mean, at some point, you're all rich beyond your wildest dreams. And this is anybody in any sport. This isn't like unique to the league. I'm saying that once you get to a place where where money's no object, now now it's about winning. It's about trying to win, my man. Let's get to the winning and the and the trying to win part of this deal here. Like we're all taken care of. Sounds like you're a Clippers fan now. No, it just bothers me when guys don't play for over a year. Like, you better have a – look how quickly dudes come back from seemingly catastrophic injury. Like, you see it all over the place. Like, that guy's playing. Didn't he just lose an arm last week? He did, but they put a new one on. He's going to play. It's crazy. Kawhi, your thoughts on Tiger Woods' toughness <laughs> right? to play in the Masters. <laughs> yeah. Oh, drives me nuts. It does. Okay, so it is. Moving forward, we mentioned it, but good win last night for Florida State Baseball. Let's revisit that. That's a 5 to nothing, thorough butt-kicking. The crowd of over 5,000, nearly 6,000 people needed that. I think Florida State Baseball needed that, desperately. There's a lot of orange and blue in the stands, but a lot of faithful yeah, Florida State were fans that were there. They kicked is what they were doing. You had a couple of key situations, bases load, a couple out. There's a hard-hit ball, I believe it was to, to right field, mm-hmm. the liner, and uh, that was the biggest threat of the night. But you saw good defense. You saw counts being worked. And you they saw... pitched extremely well. They did. Scalaro is a starter. It's different. It's just, you know, if you string two or three hits together against Scalaro to start a game, feels very different than when you're holding on to a one-run lead. And something like that happens. He pitched well last night. He did. I like Davis Hare a lot, too. And Crowell pitched well. So, yeah. And the left side of the infield was magnificent. Picking it up, baby. That throw from carry-on is Picking absurd. It up. Yeah, well, he's shown that. Um, 
let's just see if it carries over. I mean, let's just see if it carries over. But yes, you got you got a lot there. I mean, it's exciting to to watch them play that way, and we feel like they're capable of that. Now, I don't know that I can trust it moving forward because they haven't shown evidence that that is something they can string together for multiple games. You know, in in big moments, they got a big series starting Thursday against Louisville. We'll see. Um, the, the season's long. And I bring this up a lot. You're going to go through stretches where you just don't play well and you look completely lost. If you don't come out of them, then we have to question what's going on. Uh, if you do, then it looks like the hiccup along the way was just that. We'll, we'll find out. We'll see if they get there. Uh, meanwhile, meanwhile, we did do the wrap on camp and, and where they're at. And now we all sit back and we hold our breath that Mims, the potential transfer portal um tackle from Georgia makes his way to Tallahassee. If if that happens, it's potentially game changing. We don't have guys that look like that on this offensive line. We don't have players that, you know, I talk about the clay you have to mold, right? What you have to work with and uh, what, what you're capable of, what kind of heights you can reach based on the initial talent you're able to lure to your school. Well, we haven't lured guys that look like this uh, to Florida State in some time. And Alex Atkins is a really good coach. Uh, he has a relationship with uh, Mims. And uh, if you're able to bring him in, it changes the game. Um, you know, it's it's so fascinating. It really is a snapshot into recruiting and where Florida State's at compared to Georgia and also the modern landscape of recruiting, which requires money. Maybe it always did for guys of this stature, but now it's public. Now it's understood. Now rising spear enters the picture and says, come on down. We got a, we got a package involving money. That's going to perhaps make you all the wealthier than you thought possible. And you'll get to start. Come on down. Let's see. I mean, obviously the conversation doesn't sound like that necessarily, but we know uh, we're not, we're not hiding our head in the sand here. That's what it's going to come down to. Do you have something competitive uh, that is, uh, you know, aligned with what he's perhaps being offered from the likes of the University of Miami and others. Yeah, it just sounds like he's a player who would be apt to say yes to Tallahassee if you did the right thing otherwise. And as long as Mike Norvell has been indirectly, of course, right, because nobody has these conversations, it's not allowed. It's illegal in the state of Florida. As long as his program is able to, again, from an unaffiliated place, completely different, Rising Spear, make that offer, then okay, you should be in excellent position to close the deal here, but you got to your thoughts on Mike Norvell being excited about the future after wrapping spring practice yesterday. Um, you know, he's going to say what a coach is going to say after a spring session. He's not going to tell you, boy, I'll tell you what, after this spring, it makes me realize we are hopeless. Everybody, there's nothing going on here that should excite you. We suck. Huh? Everybody get a good look at that spring game. We got no shot. Woo. Rest up. Your feelings are going to be hurt. Come fall. No, he's not going to say that. Yeah, a couple of the members of the media who are out there and they could be affiliated with us or not, we're just, you know, kind of talking about it as practice was going on. And it was, what do we really ask him? <laughs> because he kind of did his state of the program yes, thing did. on yes, Saturday. He yes, he did. The thing that he said that stuck out to me, because a lot of it was fluff, of course, was um, we got better at communicating this spring. I agree. 100% with that. true. That, that, is that is really something that stands out, mm -hmm. just, you know, comparing practices from even the fall. To now, they know how to communicate with each other. It's because they trust each other to be where they're supposed to be. That, that it's really apparent on defense. It's easier to do that thing pre-snap communication-wise on defense because each level has to be where you know in, in, in unison together. Whereas in the offense, the quarterback is setting the tone and the center is calling protections, and that that's it. But you can see it. It's much more efficient. It still needs to get better, but it's much more efficient than it was. And that's why you know I go back to what we were talking about in the first hour with the summary of spring. There are areas of strength. There are areas of weakness. There are some intriguing, um, I don't know, positions to fill, guys to see if they can find in the transfer portal, et cetera, others that need to step up in their offseason conditioning. All those things are true. But one thing is definitely also true that is very booing, and that is that, uh, man, I, I feel like, they're in a real good place from leadership and communication standpoint on both sides of the ball. I really believe that. I, I think they're all one there. I, I don't think that, you know, Jordan Travis has never been that big a leader. He's never been a guy. And that's not a knock. Some guys just aren't. He hasn't always been in a position to be, but he seems to right from day one in this camp, 
take that role willingly and uh, is excited to do so. He's confident, obviously. It's his job, and he's in a better position to lead that way. There are a couple guys on this offense that maybe that's true uh, of, but in particular, Jordan. And then on the defensive side of the ball, you have a lot of people that stepped up. Tatum Bethune coming comes in here from UCF and immediately changes the game, both in talent, uh, obviously he shifts the possibilities uh, of the linebacking core, but the way he communicates. Jamie Robinson is another guy in the back end of the defense who communicates well, is a leader, is physical, and a real good football player. Uh, I think they've got a multitude of guys up front. Big Coop has kind of become a leader. I, I believe that Fabian Lovett's become a leader. That's evident when you're out there at practice, that there are guys that everybody kind of turns to to set the, set the tone. Uh, th- th- that is correct. And they're on board, I believe, with Coach Fuller. Right. That's part and parcel, I think. You know, it. It would be apparent if they didn't like the instruction, and and we I don't know that we'd be able to say it, but you know it would be apparent if they didn't like the instruction by, through the way they play, and through either confusion because then you're not listening, you're going to try and freelance everybody. It, I mean, it was the second half of the Louisville game last year towards the end of the season. There were times where they were outgunned. Often they were outgunned. They didn't have the right talent out there to compete with some of our opponents, but you kind of saw how. They played as a, a group of eleven, yeah. rather than a, you know two or three individuals doing good things, three or four not doing some good things, and it was always a mix of who was the two or three and who was the the three or four on every play. It just you don't think about it anymore. It's almost like you know a, a good official or a good umpire is one you don't notice. When you don't notice that there are communication issues, that means right. it's running as it should, and and it's becoming less noticeable that you're going, oh man, that guy was out of his gap, or or he la- he's late. He doesn't know the play. He's waving towards the sideline. You just don't see that very much anymore. We saw a lot of it the first half of last season, and it caused us to grow ever more concerned. And that has really subsided to a place now where I don't really ever anticipate seeing it. Yeah, one thing that you see a lot from the secondary is a guy yelling, maybe one corner to the slot corner or something, and they're jumping up and down because they're like, good God, will you hear what I have to say? And you just go, oh, great. So if I'm the quarterback, I'm looking over there as soon as the ball is snapped. But you don't, again, it just, it seems like everybody is calmer, biggest, calmer than you are, dude. Biggest question as we get set in head to the fall will be the same exact question we had heading into the spring. Is the passing game going to take a big step forward? Don't know. Spring did not answer the question. Not for me, it didn't. Uh, I think they've got a couple of answers, but they have not shown me that I can trust in this passing game when they have to pass and the defense knows that it's likely. Don't know. Because it's not a death sentence to go to third and five, third and six. In this offense, it kind of was. If you have to throw the ball and they know you have to throw the ball. I don't know that we've solved that problem just yet. Maybe they do. I feel a little bit better, though, and, and I agree with you. It's just Jay Sean Corbin so many times in the last two seasons had to make up stuff in order to get you a yard and a half. If you needed a yard and a half where it's like, all right, here's where the play is designed to go. Great thing that he's got awesome vision and he can get small and dive forward and find a way yeah, to convert. Yeah, because the line wasn't providing that yard and a half for you. I think they've gotten better at that. I think that's better. That's where I'd say that the offensive line may be improved. At third and one, I don't feel hopeless if they call a run play, like a traditional one, not a trick one. Well, I think when it's going to be very interesting to see the makeup of this offensive line. I still don't know what it's going to be. I don't think we do just yet. So, you know, Dylan Gibbons is a starter. You can set it and forget it, and he's your best offensive lineman in all likelihood unless you get the Mims kid. So, great. You know, good, good, good. You have something you believe in, but you don't know what you have at center right now. You don't know if that's Marie Smith, and he's undersized still. So if he starts, that's a problem on third and short. That's a problem with any kind of red zone offense, all that stuff, like it was last year. Uh, Maybe he doesn't. Maybe it's Caden Lyles. All right, well, I haven't seen the athleticism or consistency from him yet now. In sheer girth, that's a big man. You'd like to believe it's going to work, but there are other things that we do with our linemen that require you have good feet. I don't know that that's there. The experiment to try to get more guys capable of playing tackle so that you can move guys around and play the other guard, I don't think that really came out the way that they were hoping this spring. So there are a lot of question marks still about who that group is going to be and what they're capable of. Yeah, I'm wondering with Lyles, is that a situation where maybe they're going to do some work to trim him up? I don't think it's necessarily bad weight. You want somebody to look like that as an offensive lineman. Yes, you do. But if you're asking for him to be more agile, like, for example, uh, Alex Atkins was asked today about could he play guard? And Atkins' response was, well, anybody in our top seven needs to have position versatility because things are going to happen. Yeah. So you've got to be able to play. And, you know, center to guard is not that difficult of a thing. But look at the way we pull our guards. That's what I'm saying. So 
we pull guards and they have to be fleet of foot. They have to be athletic. It's actually one of the things we do well. So we do it with the centers too. Yeah. And I'm not sure that I've seen that out of him just yet. So that's why I bring yeah. up the questions that I do. You wonder if the summer training program might be something to try and improve that quickness just enough that maybe, you know, Gibbons pulls four out of five plays. But if you wanted to, yeah, here comes yeah. Lyles. Yeah, we'll see. Jeff Cambridge, show 93.3 Real Talk Radio and War Chant TV. Hey, no fans, our partner ISF Inc. is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF. Your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. Applications, onboarding, payroll, termination. Business owners and managers, you know these are the processes that take away too much time from what you do best. But what if there was a locally owned, responsive solution that would charge you a fraction of the big national payroll companies? Sound too good to be true? It's not. North Florida Payroll Services is Tallahassee owned for nearly 15 years. And in that time, their prices have never changed. The reason North Florida Payroll Services can do that? Exceptional customer service that constantly evolves with the latest technology. From application to termination, for turnkey service for your payroll and HR services, trust a Tallahassee expert and save yourself time and money. North Florida Payroll Services, online at NorthFloridaPayroll.com. Refreshing and simple. Two words you don't hear many people use to describe their experience going through the process of getting a home loan. That's what puts the Hamilton Home Loans experience in a category all their own. If you're buying or refinancing a home, Hamilton Home Loans will provide a personalized mortgage experience that is dedicated to making the process refreshingly simple. It all begins with an initial consultation with an experienced Hamilton Home Loans advisor to find out what your goals are in order to find the right mortgage to suit your specific needs. Then your personal home loan advisor will take you through all the steps from application, underwriting, approval, and closing, all the way to the front steps of your new home. Once you've experienced the Hamilton home loan process, you can be a customer for life and never have to pay lender fees again. For first responders, nurses, physician assistants, teachers, active and retired military, ask about the Hamilton for Heroes program. Personalized attention with your needs put first. Now that's refreshingly simple. Find out more at HamiltonHomeLoans.com. That's HamiltonHomeLoans.com. Equal housing lender. NMLS number 200719. I'm Paul. I'm Paul. I'm Paul. Actually, all of us that have the privilege to work at Paul's Termite and Pest Control are Paul. We're proud to call ourselves Paul because we work for a company that puts our customers first. We love what we do, and we love the principles our company demands. Give our customers more than they expect and do everything within our power to keep them safe and comfortable. We make a difference every day and know we protect the health of our thousands of North Florida customers that we are honored to call our friends. And we're looking to bring a few more Pauls to our growing family. We have several openings now or in the very near future. Positions include termite, lawn, and general pest tech, route managers, inside sales, and customer service reps. Visit callpauls.com to see what's available and to find out how to apply. Every Pauls receives competitive pay with outstanding benefits, including health insurance, 401k, paid leave time, and holidays. I'm Paul. I'm Paul. I'm Paul. And you could be Paul, too, for the elimination of termites and other pests. And a greener lawn, too. Call Paul's. We've been getting them all in North Florida for over 50 years. Leaky faucet, busted pipes, clogged toilet, m l Plumbing is here for you. For all commercial, construction, and residential plumbing issues, call m l Plumbing at 575-9393. Or visit online at mnlplumbing.com. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk 93.3.
little help from Terry's pool service. You see, summer is nearly here. Your family is expecting to see a backyard paradise. Get it together. Can't have green water, yellow pollen, collection of who knows what the hell else is in there in the corner. You'll need help. And you need help fast. Needless to say, calling Terry's Pool Service will save your pool. Tom has a pool. He calls Terry. Check him out at terryspools.net. Terryspools.net. Or give him a call, 850-580-7334, because you never know when you'll need them. How's your pool looking? It's ready. It doesn't get a whole lot of direct sun. No, it's cold. So, it stays um, cold. Your pool stays cold into June. Yeah, I'd say about over under two and a half, three weeks before we can start jumping in there in earnest. Ready to have some cocktails by the pool, watching some baseball. Yes, sir. We're gonna have some cocktails with the folks from Terry's Pool Service on Friday. <laughs> they're coming by to have some drinks. <laughs> yeah, well, they're the, sponsoring the tournament. I know, but I was gonna say at your pool. <laughs> hey guys, oh, no, come no, no, on no. in. Let's hang out by the pool, do some drinking. I, I can't be in two places at once. We'll be on that golf course. I like my pool, but I prefer to be on the golf course on Friday. That's going to be a lot of fun. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. I feel good. I feel good. I'm feeling better. Okay. I'm slowly getting through these What shows number are we time. shooting for here? Gross oh, score, because it's all I, I, netted out, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, we, you know everybody's going to have their handicaps submitted. But uh, what is our gross score we're looking uh, what for? What do you think? What do you think? Do you have a feel? Um, I'd, you... I'd be happy with 62 or lower. Yeah. yeah, you've been playing very good golf lately. I haven't been playing a lot of golf. Um, first of all, being sick for a week didn't allow for me to play a lot of golf. So, And even prior to that, I had a bunch of things come up. So I don't know, it's been like three weeks. So who knows? Could be great, Tom. Could be terrible. I could be all over the lot. You never know. But you know what I do know? We have a kick-ass time either way. This is correct. I don't have to wait. It's a scramble. If I tow a couple early on, who cares? Well, Matthew's got me. On par 5, 18th. Or uh, you're talking about Matthew Millar? Or, uh, oh, no, no, uh, Director Matthew. Yeah, Matthew Director Millar, Matthew. his game went south two years ago. He hadn't hit a ball straight in forever. Well, then we'll have him aim to the street. He's out here hustling stuff. I don't <laughs> know. You know, I'm not. <laughs> well, if he gets in a groove with driver, then we're all set that we could just yeah. swing for the fences. Oh, we are anyhow. It's a scramble. That's right. <laughs> but yeah. News we'll... flash to the group in front of us. We're coming for you. Yeah, here it comes. Let's get after it. Let's get after it. I uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think it's going to be a great time. I know that. And I know more importantly, thanks to our great sponsors who I've talked about some anyhow, uh, we um, will have an opportunity to raise a lot of money. So that's good. That's good. And uh, Second Harvest is going to do well. It's a good week for Second Harvest, which is what this is all about. So uh, there's that. And, you know, I'm thinking lately, uh, you know, the, the show being about the show right now, uh, we need to have a couple more of these. I don't know about golf tournaments per se, because those are a yeah, lot no. of hard work. <laughs> <laughs> no, one's good a year. That's fine. <laughs> um, but you know, bowling, we gotta get to, we gotta do I think we can do multiple bowl, bowling tournaments. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Bowling's not a problem. You're well, like, yeah, well, yeah, let's do that. Well, no, we'll put a board together. We'll have a board handle it. We're gonna I think we can expand the empire. Let's go and have a board of community events, you know. Panama Jack writes, Rick Neuheisel has Mike Norvell on the hot seat this year as reported this morning on his Sirius XM show. Uh, I know Rick Neuheisel. I could, and this is not a, a flex in any way, because who cares? Um, but I could I could, I could, could call Rick and get an answer uh, for that. Uh, I've worked with him on Sirius XM. Rick looks a lot like Bucko Bruce. <laughs> no, oh, yeah, just hold up the phone there. Little Bucko Bruce. Uh, but I, I could call Rick or text him and say, what the hell, man? Uh, here's what Rick doesn't know. He should have called me. He knows he's got an inside source here in Tallahassee. Uh, Mike's not on the hot seat this year. Not at all. Now, if you were on the outside looking in, I get why you'd say that Florida state historically, uh, has a very high standard. They did fire a coach for less time than Mike Norvell for not performing. Right. So from the outside looking in, you'd say you marry those two elements and you'd go mm, better perform or he may be out, but no circumstance. And the, them not wanting to start over plus finances dictate no chance he's on the hot seat. But I'll repeat what I've said before. And people emailed me and this got tweeted about and people thought, you know, maybe that I was insinuating that he was in trouble. What I said was that this year was vital, not because Mike is in danger of being fired right now, but because he would be a dead man walking if, in fact, he has a poor season this year. And I believe that is 100% accurate, and I stand by that. He wouldn't be fired after this year if they went 6-6, six and six, but he might as well be. Uh, 
because you are not going to be able to recruit the difference makers at a high school consistently if you have a 500 or worse season in year three. You're not. The window to cash in on the new car smell has already come and gone. Now you have to prove it on the field. It doesn't matter that you were handed a terrible set of circumstances, and it doesn't matter that you've been really unlucky. At some point, if you're going to win the services of five-star caliber players, recruits to come to your school and change your fortunes, you're going to have to win games. And seven and five or six and six ain't wooing them on the heels of a five and seven season and the previous year of COVID year. You're going to have to be downright proven to be turning this thing in the right direction. And eight and four does that. Anything sub that I don't think does it. Of course, how you lose and how you win matters. Circumstances matter. You win and lose for reasons, and those reasons invoke emotions. But if you're a high school kid, you're a five-star player, and you're deciding where to go to school, and Florida State hasn't really mattered in the entirety of your high school career, let's be honest, if you're going into your senior season right now in high school, Florida State has sucked your freshman, sophomore, and junior seasons in high school. Since you've been a teenager, really. Yeah, okay. there's been All right. much merit. So what's going to change for me and what's going to make me consider Florida State University if I don't have a background in Florida State love, if I don't have a parent that went there, if I'm not from a place whose coaches are connected to the school, right? If I'm a guy basing my decision because I'm an elite player and I can go wherever I want to go, and Clemson has called me out of the ACC, and George has called me out of the SEC, and whatever, Oklahoma's still not in the SEC, they've called me, and USC now on the West Coast has called me, and Ohio State's called me. Why am I now considering Florida State? Well, the only thing that would help me consider Florida State is a couple of real high-profile wins, an energetic and, and convincing coaching staff and a winning record, something that shows me they're moving positively in the right direction. They won eight, nine games this year. And you know what? They knocked off uh, Miami for the second consecutive year. Early in the season, they knocked off LSU. And the games they lost were really close. You can clearly see they're on an upwardly mobile trajectory. Maybe I will consider them. They seem to have something going on there. I'll give them a visit. I'll talk to them. I'll consider them for real, about a possible destination for me. Six and six doing that? On the heels of five and seven? No, it's not. It's not. Seven and five doing that? I doubt it. I doubt it. I think you got to start looking at eight, nine wins. Again, that doesn't mean if he doesn't win eight or nine games, he's getting fired this year. Of course it doesn't. It does mean that he might as well be, because in my mind, he's a dead man walking. That means you're just biding time and playing out the string the following year. Unless the bags are so robust that it overcomes. But they that... won't be because we're Florida State and we don't have right now Alabama, Texas A&M, Notre Dame, Southern Cal money. We don't have it. Hey, no refunds. We're not giving any refunds at, at our uh, institutions. Our rising. If you donated, that's it. We've got it. That money's yeah. ours now. Well, right. It, we, we're going to need it one way or the other. Yeah. Well, this is, yes, not to have the exact same discussion we had before, but my whole thing is... <laughs> What does it matter to just keep cycling coaches in and out and how expensive that is versus taking that money and well, siphoning it into a fund I, for I, players? I understand what you're saying. I Again, do not mistake what I'm saying with my personal thoughts on what Florida State should or should not do with Mike Norvell if he goes 6-6, six 7-5, and 8-4, six, and 4-8, and four, four and eight, what, whatever it is, okay? That's a more nuanced discussion. There are a lot of factors we would consider if you're asking what I would do. I'm telling you that if there aren't appreciable differences in the product this year that sees them change the record from five and seven to say eight and four or nine and three, I don't think they're going to successfully woo the number of four and five star recruits you need to change your fortunes over the next two or three years. Yeah, I've got. OK, so a couple of notes. Number one, evaluation wise, even with an incomplete pitch that they can make. Is that fair to say? They can't make the right pitch. The way they want to pitch it to kids, they can't do that Right. Yet. Even with that, evaluation-wise, they've brought in a good class, a very good one this time around. And not yeah, all those kids are... they also whiffed on some guys that, and that stands sure, out. Right. But what I'm saying is they're good evaluators, clearly. I think the so. kids that come in are going to help. You yeah. don't see anybody here, you go, why? 
dude. What, what, what is this kid here for? Is this numbers? You're just throwing numbers at the problem? Right. No, no, no. And it's... then they go five and seven, and they still, wherever you look at where it settled down, you know, top 15 or top 20 class, you're able to do that with no evidence to speak of, and you're five and seven. Yeah, you won't be able to keep doing that. But I think at seven and five, you might still be able to do that again. Now, it doesn't give you the slam dunk class you're looking for, but it gives you a class that you've got a fighting chance that this roster could be flipped into a place where the floor continues to raise. I'm not saying I want to live in that reality. I'm just saying if you did, you might be able to skate past it at seven and five. I doubt it. I doubt it. I don't think so. I think, I think you're pretty well screwed. Um, but I also think they're going to be pretty good. I, I don't think they're going to be a great team, but I think they're going to be pretty good. I think you got a real good chance to win eight games. Real good chance. So, you know, this isn't like doom and gloom predicting. I'm responding to a question here about New Heisel saying Mike's on the hot seat. That's how it came up. I didn't just willy-nilly decide this. Uh, Panama Jack brought it up. Um, Blame so, him. Yeah. But so the point would be that, uh, yeah, he's not going to get fired this year. I mean, I I could make an argument, frankly, that he could go three and nine and he wouldn't get fired. Man. If this ain't doom and gloom, it really feels like it's a lot of doom and gloom. No, no, no. Hold on to answer the part about hot seat. But by even... definition, if you're on the hot seat and you have a bad season, the conclusion is that, uh, according to the people that think you're on the hot seat, that you'll be fired. I don't think so. I hear you. I'm just saying entertaining these hypotheticals feels very gloomy. Oh, that's sports talk radio. We do. We entertain hypotheticals all damn day. We project what a guy's career means or what a what a season is going to look like for the Bucks or the Dolphins or whomever. I mean, this is exactly what we do. And that doesn't mean it's negative. I, I for one, think that the program is making strides, that this is an arduous process and it's part of a major rebuild that nobody wants to accept. And I'm patient as hell about this. I don't like it. It's not fun, but it is all part of the growth and that we're having to deal with it. There have been missteps along the way. There have been you know, moments where they succeeded wildly as well. It, but if you're asking me whether or not a mediocre season, well, if you're asking me what does a mediocre season mean, then I'm giving you an answer. It means you're probably long term kind of screwed uh, because I don't think you're going to be able to rebound from that. I think he needs to have a good year. I think he knows that. I don't. I don't think that Mike's in the dark here. I don't think he thinks like he can just m you know middle about. I think that he knows they got to uh, take a step forward. I don't think he's aiming to. He's not the type that strikes me that he's happy to be collecting well, a check. Well, and it's important. Right. Uh, I think he's passionate. If I had questions about that, I'd be downright calling for his firing. So what I'm saying is my man cares deeply about winning. He cares about winning the right way. He so far uh, got it in. By and large done the right thing in order to start making those strides that we're talking about. I believe all of that's true. I, I like Mike Norvell as a coach. I mean, I, I really do. I think he's a good football coach. So I want him to get it right because as a no, I don't damn I don't want to start over. I I you know, I don't want to start over. So and it wouldn't, I mean, if we were forced to, I don't care if they brought in Nick Saban. That would suck to have to start up. Well, that'd be pretty cool. Okay. Again with the gloom, you know. Like, <laughs> we're not gonna start over here. We're climbing. We're climbing. We're not climbing down. You can climb either way, but we're climbing up. Rung, one rung at a time. Oh, you're going to create a meme. You're going you're gonna to provide ammunition. If they like, if they have another moment where they fall on their face against a team that they're heavily favored against, there's going to be a guy climbing down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like I'll do an old 8-bit video game, you know? It looks like if you're playing Donkey Kong. Do you remember? So on the air, I did this one time, and, uh, you know, it was... Uh, incredibly selfish because i was appeal i was using this uh bully pulpit as they call it uh to try to get a question answered um that it was just lazy but i'm gonna do it again so your basketball hoop is uh in trouble again no my hoop's oh, awesome it's, oh, it's not my that question. no okay. it's doing great i uh there was a video game i think it was in the 80s for sure i loved it and i've never been able to find it you had to climb up like a tower a huge um like a skyscraper and old women and stuff would open up their window and they'd see you crawling up and they'd throw flower pots at you and stuff and you'd have to shuffle over. Uh, you were barely holding on to these windows trying to get to the top. Birds would poop on you. There were people. It was. Were the, you a person or were you like yeah, a monster? No, you were a person. It was 
awesome. I love that game. Sounds like Paperboy, but you're climbing up a skyscraper instead. Oh, but it was the best. I loved it. And you had, I think, you, I think you had two joysticks, and you'd shuffle over. And sh- it was in the arcade, the actual arcade. They never made it for the home console. It always pissed me off. I wanted it. And you like, you'd shuffle over. You'd wait your turn, kind of map out where you're going to go next, almost like rock climbing. And then you'd stop and then you'd see the old lady start to open up her window. Cause she was fearful. Some dude was climbing up her uh, tower there and she'd throw pots at you. It was a great game. Surely somebody else remembers this game. I don't know why I'm talking about that, but I, I it's a little bit like this program sky, climbing. Sky. It's a little, maybe it was climb something. Climb climber. Maybe it was called climber. Crazy climber. Good job, Michael. Crazy climber. It, uh, that sounds right. Well, let's make a graphic of Mike as the crazy climber. Crazy climber. Yeah. Don't let the old lady throw the flower pot off your face, Mike. It's Jeff Cameron, 93.3 Real Talk Radio and Warchant TV. Your local news now. The Tallahassee Police Department responded to a shooting that occurred at the Hub Apartment Tuesday. Two people were treated for non-life-threatening injuries. TPD did not confirm or deny if any arrests have been made. The incident is an active investigation. A new bill now signed into law is working to promote responsible fatherhood. Governor DeSantis signed a bill that will give funding to services that address the needs of fathers and increase mentor programs for at-risk boys. It also requires Florida's child welfare system and home visiting services to increase the amount of time children spend with their dads. The Responsible Father's Law will require both the Department of Children and Families as well as the Florida Department of Juvenile Justice to provide grants of up to $250,000 to nonprofits. Those nonprofits will provide mentorship to young men or resources to help men become better fathers and help with better paying jobs. Who will receive that money or how those programs will look is still in the planning stages. This is Rachel Lene with your Real Talk 93.3 Local News Update. Brought to you by Macklemore Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Frombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Mainly cloudy this afternoon with a high of 81. Winds out of the south, 10 to 15 miles per hour. 63 tonight, mainly cloudy skies. Overcast tomorrow. Chance for scattered thunderstorms. Daytime highs approaching 79. Chance for scattered thunderstorms. Friday and Saturday, 83. Friday, 84. Saturday. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 82. Widden Glass has been taking care of business since 1945. When you call Widden Glass, you're dealing with experienced, reliable professionals who offer only the best. Like Widden's top-of-the-line bath enclosures that provide style and luxury at an affordable price. Eye-catching storefronts are a specialty at Widden Glass. We'll help you design it and install it. Widden Glass, the first name in glass replacement. Call 222-5781. Well, well, well. Hey, Jeff, look at this place. Yeah, My yeah. Goodness. Well, doing well. It's been a while since I've seen you, brother. But, uh, you know, it hasn't been a while since I've been over to Gordo's. I go there on the regular because of you, Eddie. Well, we keep you regular. Well, that's true. But I think of Gordo's as a place to sit down, have a cold beer, talk to your friends, enjoy the sports, eat the delicious food. But I think of you as Uncle Eddie, a man who takes care of his people and takes care of the town. I appreciate that, Jeff. Hey, and we'll keep you regular. Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Here's what you missed on the Greg Tish Show. Of 97 patients, 33 are vaccinated, and 63% are considered incidental. See, this is what I'm upset about. He's basically made up the percentages to look like it's at 100%, but the two are not related to each other. What's 37% of 97? It's 35.89. So why in the hell can't he literally ask iPhone to that in his articles? Maybe he's got an Android. The Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. The Cameron Show is sponsored by the legendary team at Hamilton Home Loans. Great rates, cutting-edge technology, and transparent communication is the recipe for a five-star mortgage experience at fsuhomeloans.com. Golf tournament sponsor, Walk-Ons, Sports Bistro. Walk-Ons wants you to know there's really no better way to describe the uniqueness of walk on Sports Bistro. They start every dish from scratch. You use fresh ingredients to bring their mouth-watering Cajun cuisine to life. And whether you're there for dinner with the family, perhaps date night, cocktails, 
or to watch a game on the big screen, they're always happy to share their Louisiana culture with you. Visit your Tallahassee walk-ons on Capital Circle Northeast today. Thank you, walk-ons. Appreciate you being a sponsor for the golf tournament. Yeah, they're doing a long drive. Terry's Pools is doing the closest to the pin. We got some good prizes for that, too, which is good. Yeah, uh, what hole are we using for the long drive? Long drive is seven. The uh, par five down the hill. And walk-ons will have, like, um, big hula hoops out there, giant ones. And if your ball rolls into it, you'll get a gift card. That's pretty cool. So wow. it's not just about the long drive prize. There's some other ones, too. By the way, um, I was just laughing with, in the era we live in, players moving all around. JT Daniels is transferring to play at West Virginia. My man, we're going to go to a team every year? Every year. So Southern Cal, Georgia, West Virginia, perhaps next year, Temple. Slide down to you find a level. To where, where it works out for you? Uh, that happened before this whole uh, era got underway. I remember Gunnar Keel was one of those guys. You don't remember him, but he was highly touted, and he was just bouncing around left and right all over the place. Who's the slappy that Miami brought in from Ohio State that everybody thought he, they were all excited about? Oh, yeah. Sucked. Still sucks. Hasn't done anything ever. Uh, he's already left, hasn't he? Yeah, he's a bum. Well, they didn't know they had the answer right there. You needed an injury. You know, one of the things that you find out, and, and it, it was true, I bring this up every time it happens, sometimes guys in practice do not look the part. And maybe they have all the physical tools in the world. But there are countless examples of coaching staffs, guys that have been around the game forever in a day, that misevaluate their own roster. You can make an argument to some extent. Now, it worked out well, and they won the national championship, so it's hard to criticize. but. I don't think Georgia would have let Jermaine Johnson go to Florida State if they thought he was that. Tate Martell, by the way. Yeah. Thank you, Gator Kirk. Sorry, ass Tate Martell. So, you know, and by the way, Tate, in addition to sucking, it warmed your heart that he did. I normally not rooting against kids, but there might not have been a bigger prima donna. Thank you. That's right. Take another picture next to a car, dumbass. Anyhow, so, yeah, all that stuff. Uh, but, so for me, you do realize that it, it's imperfect, right? Because there are coaches who've been around the game forever who have evaluated players, had a lot of success, et cetera, who mismanage or misevaluate their own roster. It's just that hard. Some guys don't show up in practice. And I'm always, you know, I mean, again, that is true of a guy who's actually a very good evaluator. It was true of Jimbo Fisher. I mean, we bring it up every time about Dalvin Cook, and it, yeah. it seems fitting today, by the way, where you saw the rankings work done, a sizable uh, slot ahead of uh, Dalvin Cook, top 100 running backs voted on. Yeah, I don't yeah. agree with that. Well, you don't? You don't say. Uh, Dalvin was better than work done. He was. And if you have somebody who was here when he was playing and in the stands and an adult, and you have somebody who might be more biased uh, towards, you know, recency, if they're both saying the same thing, then Dalvin is the winner. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. Um, I was lucky enough to be here as Warwick Dunn's career played out. And uh, I've obviously been covering the team as you were in school and we watched Dalvin Cook and we covered him. And yeah, I mean, it's he, Dalvin's a special kind of player. Uh, now, if you're, you're voting on the guy I want to, uh, uh, to to hold on high as a face of the program. Uh, Warwick Dunn is really high on that list. Incredible human being who's done amazing things both on and off the field. No doubt. Starting a game, we're going to go with Dalvin. <laughs> he, was, he was special. Yeah, and he could be house call first play. In fact, he was. Yeah. Some of those runs you go back and watch. Whenever you get caught flipping around and one of our uh, games are on when he's when you know in, in his era, you just the the suddenness of that guy. Like you're like, okay, well, outside zone. Oh, he's gone. Oh my, that's that. <laughs> that's the way it looked. The speed option from Ever Golson. What a play. Oh. Ever Golson in Florida Bow! State in Florida State lore. Bow! Like just shot out of a cannon. The silliness. But you're right. You know, it's it's the buildup, is the suddenness because the 
you know, it's a drop step off the snaps. So you're like, oh, they're going to run a little speed option there. And it looks outside. Oh, 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 <laughs> yeah. oh yes. <laughs> yeah. That's a good start. We'll take that. Yeah, it was. Uh, he might have had another 200 yards if he didn't have to pull up with his hammy twice. Yeah, he the, it was just this, the silliest thing. Also, one of the more underrated runs is the run uh, to, to put the game away against Miami down in the Orange Bowl uh, or not the Orange Bowl. God, I'm showing my age. Uh, hard rock yeah, 2014 yeah i was at that game and uh the, that run what's interesting about that run is like it's so effortless but yet there are still angles and it doesn't look like he should get in and you're like oh he he's a score oh suck it it's over you guys just lost man that's that yeah and noted uh cane enthusiast chris fowler was just devastated, devastated. florida state is tied it uh, uh, taking the lead taking the lead yes, yes chris yes yes Freudian slip. You hoped it again, was tied, sir. Again. Yeah. You That's hoped. right. Yeah. Dalvin was yeah. deflected there. Caught by Carlos Williams. Oh, oh. for a touchdown. Blocked. <laughs> the extra point. <laughs> that is still the best. He's like, that was a good one. It frightened him. Like his worst nightmare had become realized. Like nobody was paying attention. Not even Miami fans. We're paying attention to that extra point. It was just assumed because right. he was one of the great kickers of all time. And yeah. who's going to block an extra point? But somewhere deep down, Fowler knew it was a possibility given the curse and the streak. And he did not want that to be the case. And so it's like, and the block. Oh, he wanted to go. Damn it. Are you kidding me? Oh, that was an unexpected gut punch. <laughs> he was, he had not, he, I don't think he embraced for that. I think he, uh, it was out of the corner of his eye. He's like so ready to send it to break. I think he was trying to alert Kirk Herbstreit. He was looking at his notes. Yeah. Blocked. Yeah. <laughs> Son of a bitch! <laughs> That's what he wanted to say. <laughs> that was one of the great calls, too, from Jimbo on that oh next series. <laughs> Remember the third down scramble oh, call to end such it? such a good oh. call. Oh, get you that was... <laughs> Jimbo's like skipping out in the 50. We got no business winning this one. Another one. Add it to the list. Ooh. Suck it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this guy that was sitting next to me in four and fourteen, the guy that was sitting behind me, he and his buddy were arguing about who was to blame for the collapse, and they were about to throw blows. It was so good. The anger they had in the moment while Matt and I drank a beer and cracked up laughing. So that game was so bad. Like yeah. it's just entertainment value wise, it was awful. But it had a lot of important moments in it for a nondescript. I mean, and I get rivalry games by definition are not truly nondescript. But in the lore of FSU Miami, what are we talking about? Mm -hmm. You've got the blow to the head early on of Francois. I believe we had to have a, a, a backup in the game at that point. And then Matthew Thomas with the retribution getting thrown out of the game. Locked rightly so. Tooth out. For doing what he needed to do. Like a man. Standing tall. I was proud of him. That's the only time I was proud of him. That was a hell of a play. I remember loving it because I was like, oh, man, that was that was definitely intentional. And I couldn't be more proud of you, young man. Knock the damn teeth out. You respond. Uh, yes. That's that's respond. Norvell. Respond. That's what he would have said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Those Fowler calls are great. He's so crushed. <laughs> That's his adopted team because he's a Colorado grad. Right. But it makes me laugh so much. He's so crushed. And the blending of those two games because uh, there was so much crushing in 14 and 16. When it, when Jalen Ramsey gets the pick and he's like, and it's intercepted by Jalen Ramsey. And who else? Dub, and who else? He said, and who else? And who Which, else? I mean, come on. And the Knolls are going to escape again. Yeah, yeah. That's also the Jalen Ramsey in your face yeah. game. Yeah, they're wearing their smoke uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> come on, guys. <laughs> Good times. Let's cue it up for probably. We're going here. All right. Yeah, we're going to do it here. And then we got uh, like two minutes ish. So that's peek fine. behind the curtain time, everybody. Let's, that's fine. I got it. Oh, still See? playing the strokes. Uh, I was wanting to go to a break. I had a plan the strokes, to go to... buddy. It's time for how you say with the pitching uh, probably. That wasn't long enough to get dinged. Folks are noticing that it's a loosey goosey Wednesday. Remember, everybody, that uh, Friday is the golf tournament. So tomorrow is like Friday for us. And we're just starting the weekend. Well, and yesterday felt like the last day of school, too, at practice. The end of spring? Yeah. Yeah. All right. 
Probable is brought to you by North Florida Payroll Services, locally owned for nearly 15 years, offering payroll and HR services, including full online applicant onboarding and integration into payroll. Save your company money and headaches today. Head to NorthFordPayroll.com. This time, two days from now, we'll be at the CP at the banquet. Enjoying the spoils of shooting 62. Let's hope. Man. I can still, I can still tell I'm on the heels of, uh, of getting right here uh, because – Getting through two hours is uh, tough on the on the voice. Yeah, you need to stay on that side of the glass. I'm not. I'm ready not to... sick. I'm not sick. I just. Eh. I'm not sick. I'm fine. No, thank you. It's just a residual. Come give me a hug. Nats Braves Josiah Gray Max Freed Guardians Reds Tristan McKenzie Nick Lodolo. Cubs Buckos Way to go Zach Thompson Good start today Kyle Hendricks Get you some. Mets, Phillies, Max Scherzer, Aaron Nola. What's that score? Two to one, two to one, one to nothing. Oh, I've been, I forgot it was a one o'clock. Mets lead three to one over the Phillies <laughs> in the fifth <laughs> inning. Three to one. Buccos lead the Cubs six to two in the bottom of the seventh. Runners in first and second. Let's go, Buccos. Nats lead the Braves in the eighth. I'm gonna have to fly through this. Uh, Padres, Giants, Sean Manaya, Logan Webb, Fromber Valdez goes for the Astros. D-backs, Merrill Kelly. Skip it a few. Robbie Ray for the Mariners. Yeah. Dallas Keigel goes for the White Sox. KC Cardinals tonight. Zach Greinke, Adam Wainwright. Blue Jays, Yanks, Jose Barrios, Garrett Cole. That's a look at those that shall resolve them up. Peace, everybody.